In this video, we're looking at how to deploy a MindStudio application inside of your WhatsApp account. In this example, I'm chatting with a number and the number is assigned the name was. This AI has full knowledge of MindStudio thanks to our data sources, so we can ask it any questions about MindStudio. For example, let's ask it what's the logic block. The AI will now take in my question, formulate an answer based on the data sources and provide an output. After a few seconds, you can see the response from the AI. Here is the response from for WhatsApp. The logic block in my studio has the following main settings, conditions, logic, engine, and we also get a link to the documentation article to learn more about the block. Now let's take a look at how to build this inside of your account. First things first, you need the actual AI. You would build the AI inside of MindStudio. To build an AI inside of MindStudio, click on the plus icon at the top left corner from the MindStudio desktop app or from the browser app and then create a new AI. You need to decide what the AI will do. You can start from the generate prompt, which is our AI prompt writer, or you can start blank to generate the prompt on your own. Let's click on generate prompt and click on next. Then describe what the AI should do. For example, the AI can be an assistant to the knowledge base. Then click on generate and the AI will generate the prompt and title your AI. Then you need the automations, and this is where all the magic happens. In order to understand more about the automations you need to make this work, let's go back to the finalized product so that you can see it in action. Let's click on the back icon, and my AI is called was test. Let's edit this one. So here the prompt is very similar. We are just instructing the AI to be an assistant for Mind Studio, a no code AI builder, but all the magic happens here in the automations tab. We have a start endpoint, we are querying a data source, we are sending a message, and we are chatting with the response. This last block is actually optional. You can remove it and it will not impact the workflow at all. The starting point doesn't do anything other than start the flow, so the two action blocks here are the query data source and the send message block. Query data source will take in a data source from the left side panel and query it to get a response. Querying the data source means that it will return a snippet from the complete data source depending on the query. The query is a dynamic variable. A dynamic variable is a variable assigned from the API. This means that it does not exist in the workflow until we call the workflow from the API. We'll see how to do this in Zapier very soon. Then we're saving the response in the variable name context, and that's what we're passing on in the send message block where we say user asked, this is the question passing from the API, reply, context from our knowledge base, context. And context is the response of this context query data source. Just to take a look at the data source, this is our knowledge base, and it's imported as an HTML document, which contains a table with the title, content, and URL or link for each of our knowledge base articles. This is all you need for the application layer. You need the query data source and you need the send message block which actually interacts with the AI model, in this example, Clotri IQ, and gets a response for the user that will then be displayed in WhatsApp. To deploy this in WhatsApp, you need to enable API access for this particular MindStudio application. To do that, click on What's Test, which is the name of the app, in the left side panel, and then on API Access under Access. You will see a button to enable it if it's not enabled already, and then it will display the app ID and the API key. You need these two values to connect it to Zapier. Once you have these two values, you're ready to connect the MindStudio application to Zapier. However, you need one more step in order to deploy it in WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a service that lets you chat with people based on the phone number. So you do need a phone number and a business account on WhatsApp to make this work. Zapier does not integrate directly with WhatsApp, so you will need a middleman. The middleman is open phone in my example, but you can use your own phone number if you want to. Open phone generates a phone number for me. You can see this, my US phone number, and it lets me create a business account. The second service is Watstel. Watstel connects to the WhatsApp cloud API and lets you build applications in Zapier using their endpoint. Finally, we're using all of this together in the MindStudio Zapier workflow with the Wattstell as trigger, Mind Studio in the middle, and Wattstell in the end to send the message back to the WhatsApp session. This sounds complicated, but it's actually fairly straightforward to set up. It just takes a little bit of time. So first of all, set up your phone number either with a virtual phone number like open phone or with your own phone number if it's not connected to WhatsApp already. 
Then navigate to Wattstell and click on Channels. You need to create a new channel and set it up for WhatsApp Cloud. Click on Next and select version 1.2.0 or whatever is the latest when you watch this video. Then click on Create Channel and name it. For example, YouTube Channel. Click on Confirm. And this will start the process to set up a WhatsApp business account for this particular channel. Click on Start Setup. And you will be asked to log in inside of your Facebook account. Click on Continue and get started setting up your WhatsApp business account. This will connect it to Wattstale, which is this company right there. Click on Get Started. And you need a business profile page, a business name, a business website or profile page, and the country. You can then click on Next and set up your actual WhatsApp business account. You would want to create a new account and a new WhatsApp business profile. Finally, add a display name for this account, for example, YouTube test, and set the category to something like professional services. Click on next. And here is where you need your phone number. I will take my phone number here from open phone, go back to the login process and enter it here. Then click on next and it will let you create the business account. As you can see, I already have a phone number connected to my WhatsApp business account, so it doesn't let me proceed. But this is the last step, and after you do this, everything will be ready on the Wattstell side. This is how it looks like in the end. If we navigate back to channels, you will see that my main channel, Test Mind Studio, has one chatbot connected. This is not mandatory, by the way. And it's connected to the inbox. And if you click on Edit, all you see is the platform is set to WhatsApp. This is the phone number I connected, the phone ID, the display name, and the account mode. This should say live, and below that you can see the message limit tier, which is 250 customers every 24 hours. To learn more about the limits of Wattstell, please take a look at the description of this video. Lastly, we need to set everything up in Zapier. Just as a quick reminder, we now have the MindStudio AI ready to go, we have the API enabled, and we have a WhatsApp business account set up through Wattstell, which is an available trigger in Zapier. So now let's navigate to Zapier, and let's rebuild this workflow together. In the end, it will look like the trigger set to Wattstell, the middle set to MindStudio, and the endpoint set to Wattstell. Let's go back, click on Create, New Zap, and our trigger will be Wattstell. Choose the event, New WhatsApp Message. You can use Wattstell to connect it to a Facebook environment, to an Instagram environment, and to a web chat environment. But in this example, we're setting a WhatsApp channel. So click on New WhatsApp Message. This is an instant trigger, meaning that this will trigger every time this bot receives a message. Click on Continue and connect your Wattstell account. In my example, I have it connected already. If you want to add a new one, click on Change and then Connect New Account. This is very simple and will simply ask for one authorization layer to connect it to Zapier. Then click on Continue and set up the trigger. You'd want to choose the Wattstell channel, which in our example is Test Mind Studio, the channel environment, which is one and it's named default, and finally the triggered messages. The triggered messages should be inbound messages only. You do not want this to trigger for outbound messages because that way it would trigger even when the AI sends a message and you don't want this to go in a loop and basically reply to itself over and over again. So choose inbound messages. Then click on Continue and test the trigger. This will return all the latest messages in this channel, and you can see here the example that we got before when we tested the AI. Now click on Continue, and it's time to set the action. The action is to send the chat from WhatsApp to Mind Studio, process that message, and then get a response from the AI back into WhatsApp. So our action in the middle now is going to be Mind Studio. Select Mind Studio latest beta you will not see these other two options. These are for testing purposes only for the staff. Click on Mind Studio and then Event Run Workflow. It's the only event for our application right now. Then click on Continue and select the proper account. In our example, the proper account is Mind Studio Walls Test, but I'll show you how to connect it from scratch. When you click on Connect a new account, you will see it will require an app ID and an API key. 
Again, these are found in the API access point of your MyStudio application. Under what's test, API access, you can copy these and paste them in, and then you will be able to use the MyStudio app inside of your Zapier workflow. Let's select MyStudio what's test and proceed. Now you need to map the variables. To understand a little bit more about the variables, we suggest looking at the Zapier tutorial on our YouTube channel. But as a quick refresher, the variable is what we are initializing in MindStudio. So going back to the main flow here, you will see that we're querying the data source and we are sending a message with this variable included, dollar sign launch variables entry. So what we need to do from the Zapier side is map this variable, the variable entry, to something because this needs to be the WhatsApp message. You can see it a bit clearer in the debugger because the debugger will show you the actual interaction we had before when we ask the AI what is the logic block. We are setting the launch variables entry to what's the logic block, and then we are querying the data source for what's the logic block. This allows the MyStudio app to understand what's the logic block using the data source and provide a factual answer in the final reply. You can also see that in the sending message below, where the sending message includes the variable name, which is launch variables entry, and the expanded version, the resolved message, resolves the variable entry with what's the logic block, which is our WhatsApp message. Long story short, we need to map our WhatsApp message to the entry variable because that's what's used in the MindStudio workflow to query the data source, get a factual answer, and then use it in the final response. So let's go back to the MindStudio workflow and map the entry variable to the chat message, which is contained in data text coming from step one, which is the what's tell trigger. Click on data text. Keep main flow as the main flow, but if your MindStudio workflow that should work with WhatsApp is on another flow, please select that one and test the step. Great, now you can add the final step, which is to take the message that this workflow just generated and send it back to the WhatsApp channel. To do that, click on plus and add WhatsApp again. This time we are sending a message we are not triggering from a previous message. So this is an action event, not a trigger event. From the event list, select send WhatsApp session message. Then click on continue. The account is the same as before and the action needs to be mapped to the proper channel, which is test mind studio. And you need the customer phone number because you need to reply to the phone number that just texted you, right? So there is a phone number that texts the channel in step one. Then we're running the workflow in mind studio in step two. And then we need to reply to this phone message in WhatsApp in step three. The phone number is part of the trigger in step one. So when you select this input here, you will see it in step number one, we have from, and from is the phone number that texted the WhatsApp channel. Then select the message type, which is a text. The message needs to be the response from step two, because the response from step two is what the AI actually generated starting from the prompt. So click on the message input, select the second step and response. Finally, click on continue and test the step. As you can see, the test is successful. So now everything is working fine and your MindStudio workflow is deployed in WhatsApp. Once you're ready to publish, name your Zap, for example, MindStudio to WhatsApp and publish it. That's all for today. You're now ready to chat with your MindStudio AI in WhatsApp without ever leaving the environment and you can even send the link to your WhatsApp channel to other people. They can chat and interact with your AI without any issues. Hope this helps and happy building.